my grandfather had given me when I was like a kid. Great. We came together and how each one of us came to be here and influence that we had on it very, made it very personal and very intimate very quickly. And it's a little bit of a different situation today because we've got an incredibly intimate group in the room who are focused on a very particular lifestyle. And I'm going to call it a lifestyle because if you're anything like me and other people who live, the, live their passions, you can't do a career like localization and marketing and translation and those kinds of things without really getting to know your work intimately and completely and immersing yourself in it. Um, it's not a, a book that you pick up and you read and say, okay, I'm going to go do this today. You have to have a knowledge that is deep and so very foundational. Well, what happens when you get really good at what you do? We all put our heads down and we work really hard and we expect to be rewarded. Um, have Everybody's heard of the glass ceiling, right? Anybody not? Do I, need, I don't need to explain it. Why are you? You're, oh, you're nodding. You're agreeing with me. Okay. It was a German thing. I wasn't sure if it meant yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, and, and we've got a little bit of a different situation because we're broadcasting on Meerkat today. So that's kind of cool, right? So we're having an intimate conversation and we're letting other people listen in. That's really important because when you put your head down and you work hard, you're not looking at the space around you and something's likely to trip you up. Has anybody gone camping and you look down at your feet and you look at your feet so long you walk into a tree? Or you're, you know, you're off the beaten path? Um, every now and then you have to glance up and see where you are and what's going on around you and what's your environment like. What opportunities are there for you that you hadn't considered before? What kind of dreams do you have and do you speak to your dreams? So the folks that are listening in via Meerkat today get to be the fly on the wall of what's happening in this room. How often, to speak to the meditation that happened this morning, how often do you just let yourself be a fly on the wall and observe your environment? What are people talking about? What, is, what are they saying? You know, what are the managers and supervisors talking about? What are the business goals and objectives? How do I play a role in that? What are people talking about they're going to be doing today, this weekend, next year? And those are important things because we become and we are who we hang out with. Steve, can you text my mom and make sure she's doing something else right now? Because your mom told you you are who you hang out with, right? You are who your friends are. I've heard people say, I want to get rich, so I'm going to go hang out with rich people. Well, how do you do that? You can't just walk in and, and, and be who somebody else is. You have to learn the environment. You have to become. You have to find ways to be accepted. How are we accepted? We're accepted by providing value and being there with something that other people need. So at the um, Alpha Conference earlier this month, one of, the, um, one of the presentations, one of the events that happened during that conference was the Latina Excellence Award for the Women of Alpha Luncheon. And we were honoring Nina Vata, and I'm sitting up in the control booth with the sound engineer, we were live streaming, and he said, every single woman that I know or that I've heard speak at that level is passionate. They're the nicest people on the planet. You just really want to get to know them and be around them. I wonder how they become that way and how they get to be so successful. And I said, well, I'm guessing that they don't become that way, that people just have those tendencies. And I'm also guessing that they become that successful because they are that way and they speak up for what they want. And he asked me to, to go a little bit deeper with that, with that one. What do you mean they speak up for what they want? I said, how'd you get this job? He said, I applied for it. Right. So you had to tell somebody you were interested in it. Right. But I think that many of us that have opportunities opened up to us speak to our friends and our colleagues and our bosses, our sponsors, our mentors about what we want out of life. And they help us find those things. It may not be the path directly that we thought it was going to be. So being closed-minded does not serve us. Being closed-minded is a self-inflicted injury that's tragic because 
if you say, this is what I want and I'm not going to veer, and you're just, if you opened up just a little bit more, you'd find the path one step to the right is really where your sweet spot is. You just didn't know it yet. I, w I want you to think about your um, perceptions. How many of you shop at Talbot's? Oh, come on, we talked about this last night, several. Okay, you do, you do, you do, okay. So how about, you don't, Ulrich, you're, you're gonna be my problem kid today, huh? I'm glad you're in the room, because we all, we all need that. Where do you shop for, for clothes that you think are probably too expensive, but you're gonna go spend the money anyway? Land's End Outlet, my sister loves Land's End. They are the bomb, they've got some great shoes that I love to go out walking in creeks with and stuff. But for a long time, I loved Talbot's clothes, and I thought, I can't afford to go shopping there. I don't want to spend that much money on clothes. Well, every time I was out with some colleagues going to conferences, I guess a lot of people that I hang out with shop at Talbot's. So we'd go to Talbot's, and we'd get, you know, okay, I'm going to spend, oh, look, this sweater's on sale. It's a great deal. It's $18. I've had that sweater for eight years, and I'll be wearing it tomorrow, so if we see each other. But it, it, it's... It's the perception, right? I always, even though I went occasionally with them, and I always found a great piece that was classic that lasted, well, recently, my sister who loves to shop helped me, who does not love to shop, with a wardrobe upgrade. And she comes and she helps me with through the wardrobe and she says, no, you can't do those and you've worn those for three years and I know you only wear them when you're on the road, but you're on the road so much everybody's seen you in it already and you can't do that anymore. And she's got all the fashion advice that I could ever hope for. And I love that about her. And so I trusted her and she went shopping and she came back with bags and I was like, that's a lot of clothes, Terry. <laughs> And so we tried them on in my bedroom and she's putting outfits together and it was really cool. And I'm trying to get from her how much she spent. She went to Talbot's, by the way, and she came back and with bags of clothes. And I finally got out of her how much she spent and she admitted, ponied up that it was $600. And, and I meant she completely revamped my wardrobe for $600 at Talbot's aha moment is happening for me. I can't afford to shop at Talbot's. It's a perception change. I mean, the number of pants and tops, this top came from that trip. The, the, number, the quality improved. I know that they're classic designs. They're just my style, things I don't like to go shopping, so buy me something that I don't have to go change every season, right? So it fit in alignment, but if I had been closed-minded, and said, you can't go shop there, I can't afford clothes at Talbot's. She might have gone somewhere else, but sometimes what I'm trying to convey is to be open to what people believe is what they heard you say. Some of the most powerful words in our language are, I heard you say. First of all, I heard you. And when you clarify with people, I heard you say, is that right? They think, oh my God, she heard me. We spoke this morning about the fast pace, especially in America. And so often we go on our assumptions of what we think we expect people to say, and when that's what we hear them say, but that's not quite what they said. You know? and then that little bit of miscommunication is just off the slightest little bit. But if you take a moment to stop and listen, it becomes something much more powerful. What does this have to do with our careers? All of us have a solid work ethic. None of you would be here today. None of you would be where you are if you didn't. Just because of the thing that you do. Being in marketing and localization does not allow you not to have a good work ethic and be successful. How many of us, though, are successful to a point and we get stuck in the career, or we're successful so much to a point that we get to a point where we are lonely in our career because there's no one else with us at our level that understand what we're going through or that understand what we're trying to accomplish or how important the work is that we do, right? So where do you find that community? Outside of events like this, Connecting online is an amazing opportunity. So you'd expect to hear from the LinkedIn diva that you should be on LinkedIn. How many of you believe LinkedIn is for your career? 
for personal networking, personal and professional. If I go to a chamber event, if I come here, I mean, we, we practice yoga and meditation today. We're going to do it again later. We're meeting people that are going to become friends, or we're meeting people again that have become friends. Your professional networking impacts your personal quality of life. And your professional networking online, your LinkedIn profile speaks to your expertise. And when you change your LinkedIn summary to be conversational, to be first person, to be directed only to the most important person that you could hope to talk to in the next 24 hours. When I sit down and I look at my LinkedIn profile, who is the person that's going to open the door for me that I need to have opened? And I write my summary to that person. And it's so focused and so specific that everybody who reads it feels that focus and specificity. I think I said that right. Cool. That's what happens. They all feel it. And they feel as if you just spoke to them, as if you just had that conversation with them. So breaking through our own glass ceilings, they are self-installed. Or maybe somebody else installed it for us, but we can certainly self-uninstall it. By speaking to your hopes and your dreams out loud, by speaking online about the things you care about, the things that are important to you, other people will get to know you too. I've met people for the very first time that have introduced me and been the referral for me to go to a presentation or to a company. And I've had people I've never met before introduce me as if they would know me for years. The truth is they have known me for years because I've been personal and online and present asynchronously sometimes, but always present in my profile and always authentic. How many of you believe vulnerability is easy for me? I'm glad nobody's raised their hand because vulnerability is not easy for anybody. Vulner vulnerability is overcoming a fear of failure. Not only a fear of failure, but a fear of being seen as a failure. What's gonna happen if people find out I can't walk today? What's gonna happen when they see Lola and they say, She's got a walking stick. I wonder what's wrong with her. So when I travel, I wear my curearthritis.org t-shirt. So it sort of helps answer the question without really having to say anything, right? Speaking to what's important to you consistently, always approaching people from a place that we're all human, we're all frail, we're all on an equal footing in that regard will allow you to be authentic online, will allow you to share your hopes and dreams online, and will allow the people who would be your sponsors to recognize you for the brilliant thing that you do not know about yourself. That's really powerful because then somebody's going to come up to you and say, I wonder if you'd help me with something. I wonder if you'd be open to this position or to this opportunity. I was stunned when I was asked to be the chief branding officer of the Association of Latino Professionals for America. I'm not Latina, half, Pearl, half Polish, half German, all crazy, right? But I, I, wasn't, I never considered myself to be a brand specialist, but Charlie Garcia, who is our, our CEO, said, this is exactly what you do. This is exactly the kind of work that you're brilliant about. And along the last year and a half, I have learned more by being open to a dream and to what somebody else thought I was capable of becoming than I had ever imagined. I do believe I've grown more in the last 18 months than I have in the last 10 years. And I, I don't say that lightly, but I'm open to questions. I think I probably just said things that you weren't expecting, 
not that you'd know what to expect in a situation like this, but I'm open to any questions people have about struggling through breaking through your own glass ceiling, through finding a, a community, so that when you have those days where you feel lonely, you can overcome them. Nothing is lonelier than waking up in the morning and sobbing because your body wants to stretch and it feels like somebody's surrounded you with a cloth of nails. And the only thing that gets you up out of bed in the morning is knowing that you can impact somebody else's life and you turn your focus from yourself, from your own feet, and you look up and you see the beauty of the woods and the landscape around you. It's like hiking on the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's the most beautiful view, but you have to look up to see it. Does anybody have questions, comments, visceral reaction? Time check. It's 920. So we have about 10 minutes, and it's intended for Q&A. But if you don't have questions, we can continue the conversation. I think that one of the things that will enable you to find comfort with being yourself online, I, I mean, I, I had to decide very early when I knew I was going to be in social media and I knew I was going to be a speaker and I was going to be on stage and people were going to look me up and Google me, that there would be no secrets. And if I tried to hide anything, that there would be a sense of distrust and I would lose credibility. And so I decided that nothing was going to be off limits. And my husband lived in Virginia, and I lived in Denver with my partner. And I was at home over Christmas break, and I was traveling around Virginia, commenting on Facebook that I was doing this with my hubby Steve and doing that with my hubby Steve. And my mother, <coughs> who is my best critic, for whom I dearly love her, because it's hard to accept but she will in no uncertain terms tell me exactly what she thinks. And so often, she's right. I can't tell her that. It would encourage her. But <laughs> again, could you like text her, make sure she's doing something else today? <laughs> she says, Lori, what do you think people are gonna think if they look at your Facebook page and they see your statement of faith, which says, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? They see that you're in a relationship with Mike O'Neill and it's complicated. And you're posting on Facebook about doing things with your hubby Steve. And I thought, oh my God, I've never considered that before. And I said, I, I don't know, Mom. I guess they're going to think I'm telling the, the truth because who would make that stuff up? And, and that was one of those aha moments of my life where I realized that we are all human. We all do have alternative lifestyles. We all do get through life the best we can. If we walk into a room or we join a platform or we engage with people as if they're human too and we start with that as our baseline, we start with that as our commonality and then we can celebrate the differences like the women of the world who are incredibly successful, who are the women you want to get to know. Because when they walk into a room full of men around the boardroom or in the C-suite, they bring a breath of fresh air because of their different perspective. Not just because of their different perspective, but because of the fact that they're willing to share it in a way that's not antagonistic, in a way that comes from a place of mutual respect and a sense of abundance. It's incredibly powerful when you bring value to the world, expecting nothing in return, because people then want to bring you value. It's not a scorecard that we have to keep. There are a lot of times I do things, and I do what I love, and I don't get paid for it. It's OK. It's not always about the cash. Sometimes it's about making a difference in a life that goes off 
it makes a difference in the lives of thousands of people and you had a hand in making that happen. I have an incredibly dear friend, my best friend in the world, right next to you. You, you can't quite beat him out. But Bob lives in Virginia and he loves having an impact on people. He loves being a force in the community. And I constantly encourage him, his investment in me, because it, he has made investments in me. He's been the one, when I've traveled alone, that I've called at night that has cried with me when the pain has been so great. Or I've been in a wheelchair and I can't get the door open or I get stuck somewhere. He's been the one who has held me when I feel completely done. Let me stand back up again. And in fact, at times, will push me out of my chair and tell me to get my button gear. Like, filtered, <laughs> yay. <laughs> See, we can do it. And it's people like that in our lives that we need to recognize and celebrate because one thing I love about him is his, one of his values is family, those you have and those you choose. Those people are, and I feel like part of his family. I feel like he really truly cares about me. Why? Because he constantly shows it. And the impact that he's having on the world through his investment in me is incredible. And each one of us can have that same kind of impact because you don't know what your work does who it touches, who it enables. Whether you're working for Microsoft, where's Paige? And I, whether you're working for Microsoft and you're localizing and you give somebody the opportunity to earn an income, to support their family, because you know what, it's not the American dream to have a better life for yourself and your family, that's the human dream. One of my best team members is Safarez in Mumbai. He's got a work ethic that would put us to shame. And he wanted a better life for his wife and his, ch and his son. And so he found a way to make it happen. And Microsoft helped his dream come true because he uses that product to do things that enable him to generate leads to make sales happen for people who don't have the time to do those basic kinds of things that get the funnel filled. We're always worrying about servicing our customers or about making the sale, but you've got to constantly be putting people in the funnel. And because of that, because of the localization, because of the marketing, it changed his life. He doesn't work in a call center 14 hours a day. He still works 14 hours a day, but on his own clock. And he makes seven times as much. And in the last four years, has paid cash for his baby girl's delivery and has moved his family into better neighborhoods three times because of the work that you do, because you bring your products and services that make a difference for businesses, which are made up of people and helping people's quality of life. And so when you feel less than you should about yourself, or a lesson you should about anybody else, think about the impact that you make on the world. And I think we're at time. Thank you. I put on your tables, these are social media cards for the convention that we just had, and I, I wanted to share them with you because most of the content on these cards were put together by the best intern I've ever had. And by just giving her the opportunity to do the things she loved and was passionate about, she made some of the most incredible stuff happen. There are also little blue buttons with the Alpha Social team. People have been sharing updates and being social media pros for Alpha chapters for years. And they come to the convention and sign up for the social media team at convention and they say, look, I'm finally official. They've always been official, but now they're being acknowledged. So I encourage you today, before the day is out, to think about somebody you work with, no matter what their capacity is or their relationship is to you, that you feel needs a word of encouragement and encourage them and give them that sense of feeling official about being who they are. Thank you. Thank you.
We d we that was our Q&A too, yeah. You left the room. See, you were found out. At least. That's funny.